The summer movie season is right around the corner, so here's my top 10 most anticipated movies of the summer. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm talking about summer movies. Some of these are big blockbusters, some not as much. But before I get into this list, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below the movies you are most excited to check out at the theater this summer, and make sure to subscribe to that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Got tons of Multiverse of Madness content coming very soon. Coming in at number 10 for me is going to be The Black Phone. Now this is a movie starring Ethan Hawke, who obviously is the villain Arthur Harrow right now in Moon Knight, and it's a thriller slash horror film. It's directed by Scott Derrickson, who directed Sinister, which is a movie that I am way too terrified to ever watch, but he also directed the first Doctor Strange film. So he has a horror background and he knows how to do these very eerie settings. And I don't know too much about this movie. I'm being real with you guys. I've seen the first trailer a while ago, but I've kind of erased it from my mind. I know they just released a new trailer. I'm gonna try and go into this movie clean. That's something that I rarely do where I just know nothing about it. So I'm gonna try and avoid all new footage and even plot details about the movie. It's on this list because I'm so unsure of what's going to happen. It's gonna be one of those cool experiences where I go in very fresh to a movie. That's probably gonna be pretty creepy. I think it might have to do with like kidnapping or someone being held for ransom. I'm not really sure. And that's the beauty of it all, is I can go into this movie not having a damn clue what's going to happen. Number nine on my list is going to be Elvis, the biopic about Elvis Presley, the famous music star. It stars Austin Butler in the main role. Now, I know this actor mainly from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm the devil, here to do the devil's bidding. Real as a donut, mother <laughs> I quote his character a surprising amount, but also this movie stars Tom Hanks in a supporting role. So this could be an Oscars contender or it could be another Rocket Man where it gets overlooked. I think it's actually from the director Baz Luhrmann who directed the Great Gatsby film. So it looks pretty interesting. I've seen parts of that trailer again. I don't know as much about this movie as some of the others on this list, but I'm still intrigued. I'm always a sucker for a good music biopic like Rocket Man. I think that movie is stellar and I love music based movies such as Whiplash or A Star Is Born. Movies that aren't necessarily musicals, but they focus on a musically inclined person. And if the music's great, there's good dramatic performances, and it can maybe even draw some emotion out of me, maybe get me tearing up or choked up, it's probably gonna be pretty effective. Now, will this one make any noise at the Oscars? Who's to say? It comes out a little early for Oscar season, but I think the movie could be a surprise music biopic of the year. We'll see. Number eight on my list is going to be Bullet Train. Now, I believe this movie is actually a remake of a classic film that I have not seen, but the cast here is loaded. You've got Brad Pitt in the headliner role, Brian Tyree Henry, you've got uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and it's directed by David Leach, I want to say, who is no stranger to action in movies. He directed Deadpool 2, and I want to say Atomic Blonde, and he's also been a producer, I want to say, on the John Wick films. So this movie's going to have some pretty crazy and well-choreographed action, if I had to guess. And the trailer alone just looks so stylistic. I like the way they use the song Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Brad Pitt looks like he's just going to be this cool dude in the movie, and the plot looks pretty bonkers. I think it's like a hit gone wrong on this bullet train, and then they're stuck on the train the whole movie, I want to say, so it could be a really cool one location movie. I'm always a big fan of those if they are done right, so I'm excited for Bullet Train. Will it be a great movie? Who's to say? But I think it looks like a pretty damn fun time at the movies, especially for like a summer movie. Number seven on my list is actually going to be a movie coming to Netflix, and that is The Gray Man, directed by the Russo brothers, who directed Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, and more recently, Chair but it also stars Chris Evans, so it's reuniting Captain America with the Russo brothers, and it's also got Ryan Gosling and Ana de Armas. So that right there is a really solid trio to headline your movie, and this looks like a lot of fun and action-packed. Just from the few glimpses we got in that brief little Netflix preview they gave us a few months ago, we got some footage from this, and just Ryan Gosling has this way of carrying himself. He's so low-key funny where, like, you'll honestly be thrown off by how hilarious he is, whether that's in a movie like Remember the Titans, which is years old, or mainly, like, the nice guys. He has has this way of delivering lines that just makes you laugh out loud and it's so subtle uh, often and then you've got Chris Evans he looks like he's playing a total asshole in this movie he's got this big cheesy mustache I think he's actually more of the villain and then I think Ryan Gosling is more of the hero now I could have those mixed up we will see, but it also has Ana de Armas, who's just been crushing it lately with everything she's in. So the star power alone is probably going to carry this movie, but it's a spy thriller, which again, the Russos crushed it with Winter Soldier. So I'm sure this movie is going to be intriguing, probably have some twists and turns, and it's going to have some really well done action and twists along the way. Sign me up for The Gray Man. I hope we get a trailer soon. Number six on my list is going to be the next movie from director Jordan Peele. Nope. He's gone two for two in my eyes. I love Get Out, and I think Us is a really solid follow-up. So I think Nope's going to be pretty good. He's got a really great track record. You've got Daniel Kaluuya coming back to work with him. You have Kiki Palmer in this film and Steven Yeun. So the cast is really solid as well. And that first trailer we got looks so trippy. I mean, that's all of Jordan Peele's trailers. They stir up intrigue and mystery, but they don't really give you any plot details, which is a good thing. But it has me feeling uneasy. There's like this weird looking cloud coming in. Does it involve aliens? People are saying Nope could be an acronym for Not of Planet Earth, which I'm like, 
like, damn, that's creative, and that's definitely something Jordan Peele could pull off. He loves to make these psychological horror films, and I think this is definitely gonna fall into that category, but this one might be a little more practical creepy if we get to see actual aliens in the film. Who's to say? It could probably have more of a deeper symbolic meaning behind that title. And that's what I love about Jordan Peele's movies. There's so much to dissect on rewatch. We're getting into the top five. So number five on my list is Jurassic World Dominion. Now this surprises me because I never saw Fallen Kingdom fully. I've seen some scenes from it. And I think the first Jurassic World is all right. I'm a huge fan of that first Jurassic Park movie, but the franchise overall has just dwindled ever since that original entry in my eyes. So going into this movie, I needed something in that trailer to really get me going. And seeing Dr. Alan Grant and Laura Dern's character and Jeff Goldblum with our new characters and Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard put a big old smile on my face, made me feel all warm inside. And this is the way to market your movie. It's going to be the end game essentially for Jurassic because their marketing is that. They're marketing as the epic conclusion to the Jurassic franchise, which is what you gotta do in today's day and age. I think this movie's gonna light it up at the box office. The first Jurassic World movie did massive numbers back in 2015. Hell, even Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom did a lot of numbers. There's a massive fan base for this franchise. People love to go see these movies in the summertime. It comes out in like the middle of June, which is perfect for a Jurassic film. And I think with the old cast coming in, that's gonna get some people like me who are kind of iffy on the franchise to come back and buy tickets to this movie. It's going to be a huge hit for Universal. I think the movie is going to be the best of the Jurassic World series without question. And I think it has the potential to be the second best Jurassic movie overall. Number four on my list is going to be Lightyear, the upcoming Pixar movie that has the potential to be a top tier Pixar film. I mean, if you watch the trailer, it looks like a damn Star Wars movie or some sci-fi film. And then you get more details about the time jumps in the film. And it's like interstellar for Pixar, essentially. That's what I said in my trailer reaction. This movie has so much potential. And I think why I'm so excited for this movie is not because Chris Evans is voicing Buzz Lightyear, but because the original pitch for this movie was that it was going to be about the man that the Buzz Lightyear toy is based off of. But then recently I saw on Twitter from some Pixar people that the movie is actually a movie that exists within the Toy Story universe. So Andy is probably going to the theater and he sees this movie and it's essentially his Star Wars. That's what it has been described as. That's even cooler of a concept. And this is how I think the movie needs to end. What if it just pans out and everyone's clapping in the auditorium and we see Andy as the credits start to roll? That would be one of the coolest inside Toy Story references of all time. And that's why I'm so excited for this movie because Pixar is a king of originality in their animated films. And this might just be one of their most original concepts we've ever gotten. Number three on my list is going to be Top Gun Maverick, the long anticipated sequel. The movie was unfortunately riddled with delays due to the pandemic and other things. It's been in development for so long. I remember in like 2013 going on IMDb and checking it and be like, oh, Top Gun's coming out next year. And it just kept on getting pushed for whatever reason. But this movie looks freaking awesome. And one reason I'm super, super excited for it is because Tom Cruise actually flew fighter jets and he got the whole cast to train to be pilots. There's a whole dope behind the scenes feature. I don't know, you guys should check it out. It's on Twitter. YouTube, I think, but it looks so neat the way that he's able to learn to fly these jets and handle all this G-force as well as the whole cast. There's even one part of the feature out where the cast had to learn to work the cameras while they were flying the planes. So they're all essentially directing themselves, which is going to lend itself to some gorgeous practical effects action, which is something that we need on the big screen. I think this movie is going to be a visual feast because of the practical effects and the actual commitment put in by the cast. I think it's going to be a worthy follow-up, maybe even better than the original Top Gun because that movie has a ton of 80s cheese. This feels more like a modern action fun time and I think that it's going to kind of follow suit with the Mission Impossible style of action. This is going to be one of the better movies of the year and Tom Cruise is the action star of my time so I really do believe this will be a damn fun time at the movies. My top two should be no surprise but the order might surprise you. This is a last second audible. My number two is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now this movie comes out in only a matter of days, less than 10 days until this film comes out and I'm so damn excited because it's the Multiverse of Madness. We saw the trailer at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. You've got Wanda going crazy. You've got Doctor Strange trying to essentially reassemble the multiverse because it's probably gonna get shattered in this film. And there's a possibility of seeing tons of cool cameos. We saw Charles Xavier in that first trailer, so the possibilities are endless. Who's gonna be on the Illuminati? Who's to say I'll have a prediction video coming soon? But this movie also alarms me a little bit because we might all be overhyping ourselves. So I've been trying to temper my expectations recently and really be like, hey, we might not be getting as many cameos as we thought. The movie's only two hours. It's probably gonna focus more on Wanda and Strange as opposed to all these other characters that would be pulled in from another multiverse. So I still think it's gonna be an effective movie and a solid MCU movie. It could be a top 10 MCU movie even, but I've kind of just come back down to earth because I was riding this wave that it was gonna be the greatest thing ever. It was gonna top No Way Home when it comes to cameos and even be more epic than Endgame Infinity War. And I was like, that's not what this movie's all about. I never think that it was. I think 
I kind of let my mind run wild and I needed to come back down to reality. I'm still super excited for this movie. We're so close. We've gotten so much footage from it and we're almost there. Like those final days leading up to a new Marvel movie is like, oh my gosh, we're so close. You're just reaching out trying to get there. But I don't know if it's going to be as hype as I thought. I'm still super excited for it. It's my second most anticipated summer film and we're almost there. I can't wait to talk about this movie on the channel. But my number one most anticipated movie of summer 2022 is Thor Love and Thunder. Now we finally got our first look at this movie after months of speculation, and it just looks like the perfect summer movie. You've got the return of Thor, he's going on this journey of self-discovery, trying to be at peace and leave behind the superhero life, but there's so many things that are gonna draw him back in. Gore the God Butcher, as we can all assume, is going to be in the next trailer, and that's gonna be the thing that gets him out of retirement. But you've also got the Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie, the first look at Jane Foster as Mighty Thor, and Christian Bale is playing your villain. There are so many things to look forward to in this movie, from the return of Taika Waititi to just the cast in general that I can't help but have it at the number one spot. The soundtrack's going to be a bop, the summer vibes are going to be there, and this is just going to be the most fun MCU movie of the year, and it could definitely be the best movie of the summer. Also, I think it's going to top Thor Ragnarok and just end up being outright the best Thor movie. To see the dynamic between Star-Lord and Thor in this movie just is going to be hilarious. I loved where they left off in Endgame. This movie has endless potential, and I think it's going to deliver and light it up at the box office and end up being one of the more beloved MCU movies of all time. But that's gonna do it for my list. What movies are you guys most excited to check out this summer? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so don't miss out on any of my Multiverse of Madness coverage and other Marvel movies coming very soon. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.